Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. Yes, I'm back in Elder Scrolls Online. And I want to update my website, like I promised, in doing these builds. So, I need to level a Warden. Whether you're a new player or just coming back, this video is going to have some good information for you on leveling efficiently, effectively, so that way when you reach endgame level 50, you're powerful and you're ready to go. So the very first thing that I'm going to do on a stamina based character is not essentially just pick it up and start leveling with it. I'm going to go actually create gear. So I'm going to jump on my crafter first. All right, so the very first thing I'm going to do when crafting gear to make this a lot easier is come here to Malleable Tor, and it's kind of just a little bit west of the city. And there's a set called Vampire's Kissed, which doesn't really serve a purpose at endgame, so people don't use it. Uh, but my friend Gilliam the Rogue taught me, like, leveling his damn character. This makes it much, much easier at the beginning. The five piece. So if you go here to create, when you kill an enemy, you heal for 120. It scales with the level, obviously. So what I'm going to do here is basically go with the dual wield to set up to start. So I have a lot of healing, and then my sustain is going to come through a consumable that I use. So the leveling process will be really easy with this setup, whether you have champion points or not. The hard part is if you're just starting out this game, getting able to craft this does take five traits. So I'd recommend asking someone in a guild trader, in zone, or just start investigating the research for yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go five medium, one light, one heavy. And the reason I do that is when I reach end game, if I want to tank, I can basically have my heavy armor all the way leveled up uh, through the process. And if I want to switch to magic or whatever. So that's the way I get all the passives available to me. Remember in Elskills Online, passives make you powerful because you can only have so many active skills. So you want to take advantage of those passives. So let's go ahead and make a set of five piece vampires kiss. Next item set up is going to be here in Oradon on the AD side, right here, and right east of Skywatch. There's basically you can craft this from any three uh, factions, but this is where I go just because I have it memorized. And so we have a few uh, we have a few slots open left, so we're going to go with this set since it gives max stam recovery, max stam, and weapon critical. And what I do here is something a little interesting. So I'm going to go with dual wield, and we talked about that. And you can go with swords or whatever you want. It's not that uh, that important. What I'm also going to make is a bow, a two-hander, and a, sh uh, uh, a shield as well. And the reason why, I want to unlock those skill lines so I can put them on my bar and start leveling up skills from other skill lines. So that when we reach end game, we're not going to have to sit and spend hours and hours and hours grinding even though we're at level 50. This is a smart way to do this because I know this character, I'm going to be using probably dual wield 2H, and sword and shield along with the bow for whatever content I'm doing. So I want to make sure that I have those skills available later on just to make the thing easier to get into the action at endgame. Because this character, I want to do battlegrounds and smite people and make them, you know, and make them want to quit the game. Because that's what PvPers do, right? Okay, a few other items that's going to speed up your leveling process and make things easier is basically you can buy these mythic ethereal ambrosia and roughly $25,000 on PCNA, some of their servers, they're a lot cheaper. But the price will go up and down depending on, you know, activity and people leveling. You also got the Crown Store Experience Scrolls. But any type of experience booster is really good. And then this food right here is awesome. Increased max health and then recovery across the board. So that's uniquely uh, advantageous to us leveling because we're going to use magic and we're going to use stamina abilities. And if we're an orc and we have that Vampire's Kiss set... This will keep us alive a lot better, so it's really, really nice. Something else to think about that people don't think about is Grand Repair Kits. Like, if you're trying to grind and, like, get to the fastest level that you can as fast as possible, these suckers really help you out because you can just basically repair inside the grind. We're going to go to Skyreach and just blow through it in a few hours if you really, really wanted to. So those three things I'd recommend getting even a poison that heals you can help as well. Also, apply your champion points if you have any because it will help out a tremendous amount when starting leveling. Another thing you want to do before heading out for your adventure is try to have a friend travel to a Munda Stone of Relevance. So for me, on Stam DPS or just killing stuff, Shadow is usually good. For Magic, if I'm leveling up, maybe go with the Thief or the Atronach. But some of these, these Munda Stones get one. I've seen people reach Endgame, they don't have a Munda Stone. So something is better than nothing. So walk to the nearest one if you have to. We've talked about the basic stuff to leveling and getting a head start, but I want to give you the biggest tip that I found for leveling, and 
there's a couple different paths you can take. You can take grinding. Then go to Skyreach or Craghorn or a bunch of different other places. Got other videos on that. You can do the questing route, which is basically just doing quests, main story, Morrowind quests, whatever way. And I'd recommend doing the quest first if you haven't, because the story is fun and interesting. And if you just want to straight get to end game with your warden, you know, you can go the grind route. Whatever way you decide to do it, you need to set up your skills appropriately, because passives make you powerful in this game not active skills since you have a limited amount of skills you can do okay deltia so how do we do this so this is going to seem odd i get a million questions on it over and over and over but stay with me so basically what you want to do is use dual build as a stand build first the reason why dual build is incredibly strong well it's good for pve damage but really that first ability you get a morph choice with it bloodthirst it becomes your main spammable ability. It doesn't cost as much as some other abilities, and it heals you for the damage done. So at level 20 with level four gear, I can take on world bosses and I did on stream. Now it took me for a while to kill it, but you can do it. So bloodthirst is a must have if you're leveling as a stand build. So we're gonna put that on a bar, right? That's gonna level dual wield. And like I said before, I'm gonna play as a tank, uh, as this guy, like a, a PVP tank at the end. So you'll see I have Sword and Shield and Two-Hander unlocked. Now, what do I do? Seems odd. I put a one-handed shield ability on my bar. And I want to use whatever is not morphed yet. So this way, when I reach end game, I have access to my skill lines. Because I've seen countless people level up and they don't have uh, their skill lines all the way leveled. They can't take advantage of all the passes, which make you really powerful. So you put this on your bar. This will be a dead slot, meaning you can't actually activate the ability, but it doesn't really matter. Leveling is so easy if you have a main spammable that heals you, and especially as a warden because you have access to a healing line uh, right away and a stamina-based heal for stam builds, so it's so much easier to level. As long as I have my main attack, a heal, it might take me a little bit longer to kill stuff, but at least I'm leveling a skill line at end game that I plan to use. So... To that end, we're going to do two-hander as well. I'm going to put crit charge down there. I'm going to take the morph, whatever. We'll take this, start leveling it up. And then as I get access to new abilities, I'm going to put those on just so I have it morphed at endgame. So what we have here is three weapon skill lines that we're going to level simultaneously. Yes, this is another dead spot. Now let's take it a step further in what you must do, regardless if you don't like the weapon skill line setup, is have the class skill lines all on your bar so animal companion what am i going to do here magic users this is really nice uh, cutting dive and stamina uses sub train of salt huge burst swarm is a nice damage over time that you can morph all these abilities and some of them have stam based versions some of them don't so you need at least one ability on your bar so i like to take this one since it's a stam stamina attack so you can put that on your bar and then eventually I got like the burst one here, and then I'm gonna even take Swarp, get that morphed up. So one ability on your bar, got it. Green balance. This thing is strong right away. So you have a magic based one, if you're gonna play magic, and you have a stand based one. So it makes leveling a warden extremely easy compared to the other classes, because not only do you have a main spammable that heals you, but you have this. So in other classes like Stam Sork, you're waiting to get Crit Surge or Dark Deal, or you know, as a Nightblade, you're basically reliant on Vigor alone or some killing mechanics that give you back health. Not on a Warden. It makes it really, really nice. So put this guy on there, and I pretty much use this the entire time. And then lastly, Winner's Embrace, one of the strongest uh, ultimates in the game, period, right now. People don't realize how freakishly powerful this is. So you put this on your bar, and then you can swap in things in and out. So this setup right here, while it's not going to be as efficient in combat, obviously, because we have two dead slots, it's going to be incredibly effective when you get to level 50. Because what's going to happen is you'll see all these class skill lines, they're leveling together. So when I do get endgame, I can take all these passives and gain a lot more power over someone who just, you know, set up their bar for hyper effectiveness. Now, you can encounter something really troubling, some, some boss that you need to get down, just switch your bars out. Remember that when you earn experience, 
whatever's on your bar at that time gets the experience, whether it's the actual skill and or the skill line, regardless if you have something equipped or not. That's hard for people to believe. The only thing that's not like that is this Alliance War, Assault and Support. You have to actually level the Assault and Support with AP, Alliance points, rather than experience points. But for everything else, it's pretty much like that. Okay, last thing to talk about is how to level. Now, like I said before, you got plenty of options in this game. So the simplest, fastest way to do it is Skyreach. The problem with doing Skyreach is it's not fun. It's just pure grinding, but you end, you get to end game the fastest possible. And there's some other grinds over here in Spellcar and stuff like that. And you're, the problem with it is you're just gonna have to go back and get the lore books, Sky Shards, do Undaunted Pledges, and, and do tons of stuff anyway. So it's not like it's, it's the end all be all because you still have to do all that other stuff anyways. So what I recommend to most players and or people that just want a, an easy, nice, fun leveling experience is you start in whatever faction you are or you can start with the, the Morrowind quest. So when you get here, there's gonna be a main quest, the Harbridge. This is gonna give you a skill point about every five levels you can do one. Really nice to do that, big chunk of uh, XP, get you a skill point, which you're gonna to need to get all them juicy passives. Also gonna have a main faction story for each zone. So there's usually about three or four quests and some of those will get you skill points as well. You have little dungeons that you can do and you can use the group finder. And for whatever reason, the group finder are looking for group systems working a lot better nowadays. So try taking advantage of that. And then moving over to here, you have what's called public dungeons. And public dungeons have a sky shard in them, just like a normal delve, but they also have a boss in the back, typically, that will give you a skill point as well. So if you're doing these quests constantly, and you're doing these delves and dungeons like this, you're gonna be getting tons of skill points. And that's gonna make your character a lot more powerful than is simply just grinding and having to go back and do it all over again. So I do those two type of quests, and I also do like group bosses if I can, I do dolmens, the public dungeons, I get the delves, and I get the lore books. So I'm collecting sky shards, I'm having fun. It, it goes slower, but when you reach end game, it's a lot less painful because I've, I've grinded out a character in four hours, right? From start to finish. And that was fun and interesting. I had to go get lore books and it took me eight hours to get that on a whole Saturday. So I just killed my Saturday. So my advice to you after doing a billion different characters, literally a billion, Enjoy it, have fun, do the quests, take your time, and, and get your character more powerful by setting up your skill bars just like that, going through, doing the content, getting the skills, and acquiring those passives. It'll make it a lot easier. Well, gang, that is a video. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any helpful tips for someone else. So I'm playing the story right now in Morrowind, and it is excellent love it so i'm still going to commit to updating my website with the build specifically pvp gills doing pve so still got some uh, elder scrolls content and still playing star wars of the republic and looking forward to destiny 2 in the future thanks for watching